boy. When I think about what my goals were when I started mixed martial arts, it was just to be the best fighter I possibly could. I never could have imagined that I would become a double champion, you know, in the largest fighting organization in the world. So to become the UFC light heavyweight champion and then the simultaneous heavyweight champion was, I mean, it was a bigger goal than I ever could have imagined. UFC's most heated rivalry finally gets its rematch. Daniel Cormier defending his light heavyweight crown against the only man to defeat him in the octagon, former champion John Bones Jones. I think this is the most important fight in the history of the light heavyweight division. It might also be the most competitive matchup in the history of the light heavyweight division. And there's so much on the line. John Jones' legacy, DC's legacy. Before UFC 214, I, I'd never felt better. I mean, this was the most physically fit I was. I made the weight effectively. Everything was in place. The reigning, defending UFC light heavyweight champion, Daniel Cormier. I felt like my mind, my body, my life, everything felt in order. Official way, two, all five for the champion. You know, when I looked into his eyes at those weigh-ins, I, I, I was thinking that it had been a long two years since I had lost that initial fight. And I was so happy to be in a position to go and try and get back the one loss that I had in my career. You know, I, I was finally going to get an opportunity to write something that I felt went so wrong the first time we fought. As I was excited about the fight, you could tell he felt the same way because you had two guys that were at the very top of their game trying to find that, that, that special moment that would define um, our rivalry. The wait ends here for one of the most anticipated events in the history of the Ultimate Fighting Championship. This is UFC 214, Cormier versus Jones 2. Five rounds for the undisputed UFC Light Heavyweight Championship of the World. Tonight, we witness the continuation of one of the greatest rivalries the sport of mixed martial arts has ever seen. I mean, these are easily the two best light heavyweights of all time. John Jones and White getting off early here. You know, he's very aggressive. Cormier in the black with gold. Cormier checking the kicks very well right off the bat. Let's see if he catches it. Create wrestling from the catching those kicks at all. Oh, looks like he knocked the mouthpiece out. He did. I felt like we fought at such a high pace in this fight. Takedown for John Jones. Not quite. No control. DC right back up to his feet. In control of the pace. Smart. DC looks so much more composed in this fight. 
agreed. And DC seeing everything is what I'm noticing. Oh, he caught him. Big punches landed by DC. You know, it's a fight, you know? So in a fight, you give some, you take some. And I felt like that's what was happening in these early rounds of this fight. More than one combo. DC, combination, starting with a kick, ending with a kick, finish mixing punches in between. I mean, it's a different Daniel Cormier right now with his combinations in this first round. He's feeling it. You've got to be encouraged if you're out of that red corner. Listen, big deep breath. Listen to coaches. Big deep breath. Good job. As they're talking, I need big deep breath. This is your round. This is me. Your round. But, but how do we get that out? You see, three. How do we get that out? Mix it up. Mix it up. Keep the control of the pace. You need to finish going out. Let's go. Hey, stay relaxed. Let's go. Get your hands up, right, baby? Round two forthcoming. Nice knee to the body by John. Oh! A beautiful left hook and a right hand over the top by DC. DC just oozing confidence here. This is absolutely a different Daniel Cormier than their first fight. Felt very prepared for this fight. Landed some good strikes. And... With a guy like this, you got to stay focused. You have to stay the course the entire time. Jones on that high kick. Keep working inside. It's a good look for the judges when you're advancing, forcing the action. Beautiful work. I'm going to keep hey, calling the time. Hey, 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 keep stealing hey, hey, around. Hey, 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 Thank you. Breathe. Give me the big kick first. All right, here we go. Third round of a possible five for the UFC Light Heavyweight Championship. Cormier once again sends Jones retreating. Big uppercuts. Now DC's getting him coming in, breaking his posture. Got Jones grabbing for a clinch and he's hitting him. Stay long, stay long, stay long. Where's those distractions? Oh, John landed a high kick. He's hurt. I felt like that kick was thrown to get me off of him because I was pressuring him so much. And it just so happened that um, I didn't see it. You know, he had landed a lot of body kicks early in the fight. And I think I anticipated body, and he went to the head. DC was stunned by that head kick. You know, I always talk to the finishing ability of this guy. Jones trying to press the issue here. Cormier's in big trouble. That's what surprised me, was his ability to finish fights. That could be it. Cormier trying to survive. That is it. John Jones has done it. The new. United UFC light heavyweight champion of the world, John Ball. This fight is still discouraging for me because I was fighting so well. I felt like we were very competitive over the course of the time that Jones and I spent in the octagon with him winning that second fight in that fashion. But this was easily the worst night of my life. This was before my son got to watch fights, and he was at the hotel with the babysitter. And the next morning, I was laying in the bed, and the first thing he did, as soon as the son came up, he ran over to Dad and asked if Dad won. You know, I could hear him asking his mother in the bed, did Dad win, did Dad win? And uh, I had to hear her tell him no. And I was just laying there crying because my biggest fear was to see my kid's face knowing that I didn't get the job done. I try to let losses stick with me. I, I think the biggest mistake of fighters, and I think this is due to social media, everybody wants to rush to feel better. Like, everybody wants to go on the internet, oh, sorry, everyone, tonight wasn't my night, you know. But the problem with that is, your fans and the people that care for you, they want you to feel better. So they tell you stuff like, you're still the champ in my book, and you're, I didn't want to hear that. So I just isolated myself, and I felt sorry for letting the people that meant so much to me down. I felt hurt that I didn't let do what I wanted to do for my child. I felt hurt that I didn't be the guy that I wanted to be so desperately. It was just all these emotions that I went through to try to understand how it went wrong again. 
I mean, it was honestly one of the more trying times in my entire life. Kenny Florian here alongside Daniel Cormier in DC. John Jones uh, tested positive for Tarinabal from a sample the day before your guys' fight, of course, at UFC 214 in July. Jones will appeal the test results in DC. You fought Jones. What do you make of all this? You cannot test positive for performance enhancing drugs, man. You just can't do it. It's unfair. Um, I'm very upset about it. The California State Athletic Commission has overturned the bout to a no contest due to the failed test. So what does this mean for you, DC? I, I, I lost. I lost the fight. And as a competitor, that's how I felt. And Dana White called me today. He goes, you know, the championship is getting returned to you. Uh, the fight is a no contest. If he cheated, he could not have fought and cheated and still won the fight. So uh, once again, I'm the UFC champion. You know, when they reinstated me as the champion, it was this crazy roller coaster of emotions. You know, I I knew I had lost the fight, and even to this day, I still say I lost the fight. I'm not one of those guys that makes excuses. I was in there. You know, I, I know I lost, you know, so I knew what I dealt with in the first title reign in terms of people saying I didn't beat Jones when I had held that belt for two years. And for two years, I had people telling me that I was not the real champion. I mean, I was like, I can only imagine what I'm gonna hear this time. They called me about fighting. I said, no, I said, I need a year off because I, I said I needed to give my brain some time to rest. You know, I wasn't gonna rush myself back in there. I said, I'll come back in 2018. When January turned on 2018, I already had a fight scheduled. Ready to fight. I've trained hard, I've trained smart, and I'm ready to go beat this dude. I mean, he's a tough guy, but he's in over his head. You know, I hadn't really thought much about Vulcan. I knew he had beat uh, Ovent St. Pru, I think, in the beginning of the year. And then he knocked out Jimmy Manawa, a guy who I really had my eyes set on in July. And so right around November, the UFC calls me and they go, hey, your next title fight is gonna be January 20th and you're gonna fight against Vulcan Ozdemir. No, you're so sure. Got your heels on today? No, but I'm taller than you anyway. Yeah? Yeah. I ain't gonna help you Saturday. I was playing Vulcan like a fiddle, you know, from uh, shaking his hand, uh, uh, challenging him to a push-up contest. I'm feeling better than you. No, you look like a zombie, man. Push-up contest. <laughs> 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 Who are these cheerleaders? You guys go back in the cafeteria. I would be joking around with him, but when we get face to face, be very confrontational with him. Be very in his face to try to tell him, you know what's gonna happen to you. You're not gonna win. Well, don't you look over here, Vulcan. All right, your friend. You know what's gonna happen to you. You know what's gonna happen, Vulcan. Keep talking, man. Walk away. <laughs> But then when it was time for the fight to actually happen, our last engagement, it was 100% all business. Live from a sold out TD Garden in Boston, Massachusetts, USA, this is UFC 220. Co-main event tonight for the UFC Light Heavyweight Championship, Daniel Cormier versus Volkan Uzdemir. It's Daniel Cormier, a guy who's one of the best wrestlers to ever compete in the Light Heavyweight division. He thinks he's gonna use that skill set tonight and break Volkan Uzdemir, a man who's never seen this level. Volkan Uzdemir, Daniel Cormier. This is a very, very intriguing matchup. Ozdemir's throwing haymakers right away. I felt right away with Volkin that he thought he could knock me out because he came out 
guns blazing the entire time. The real question is going to be, what does Ozdemir look like in the third round, in the fourth round? As the round went on, he started to slow down. And then right here is when the fight completely changed. Oh, DC just stung him with that right hand. Left hook, right hand, one, two, one, and then the left hook. Oh! And that right eye, problematic for Volkan Ozdemir. You see him trying to blink it out. Once his eye was marked up, I knew I had him. Oh! Oh, big right, big right hand by DC. There's that single leg, he's gonna dunk, and he gets it. Cormier pounding on Ustamir here late in the first round. He's got the neck, he's got his neck. There's the horn! Wow, saved by the buzzer. And I think at this point, Uzdemir understood that this was much different than anything he had experienced to that point in his career. Round two, fellas. By the second period, I knew, I knew it was over. So it is bite down on the mouthpiece time for Vulcan Uzdemir. And I got him backing up. I know that if I take him down, I can truly out grapple him. Back to the single leg. Beautiful trip. DC's all over him. And uh, once I got him down here, I knew it was pretty much the end of the fight. Domination on the ground by DC. I was able to get to this crucifix, and once his arm was stuck, it was just punch him, punch him, punch him. Warning from the referee, Kevin McDonald, for Uzdemir to get out of there. But he can't. And that is it. Daniel Cormier defends in style tonight. Dominant performance by Daniel Cormier. And immediately, I thought, I'm so lucky, you know? And still! You know, Bruce Bruffer says, and still here. But like, I felt like I had won a vacant title. And it just felt good to get my hand raised again. I was supposed to be Vulcan Ozdemir, but sometimes the hardest thing to do is what's expected. And had I lost that fight, man, it was all over. You know, there would be nothing else, you know? It was, a lot of the opportunities that I've received would not have come to fruition if I didn't go into Boston on that night and win in the dominant way that I did. I took a lot of pride in being the UFC light heavyweight champion. And I fought and defended that belt with every bit of my being. And I, I figured after January 20th, somebody was going to separate themselves and I was going to have to find a way to fend off the next guy. Anyone that knows me knows that my fight camps are long, they're tough, they're, they're draining for not only me, but also my family. So when I get home on Monday and Dana's calling me to go and coach the Ultimate Fighter, this isn't necessarily a conversation I want to have with my wife. He told me what he was going to pay me and everything, and he goes, I'll see you in Vegas on Wednesday. I said, well, I need to talk to my wife. And he goes, I'll see you in Vegas on Wednesday. And yeah. I was in Vegas on Wednesday. Gentlemen, only two of you will remain undefeated and win UFC contracts. The coaches, reigning champion Stipe Miocic, Woo. the baddest light heavyweight champion of all time, Daniel Cormier. You could not ask for two better mentors. When I got the opportunity to coach the Ultimate Fighter, I knew that I could do well. Not only the exposure of being on the show, but also taking a part in these young athletes' lives. I'm, I'm always thinking about what I can do for the people coming behind me. And I thought that being a coach on the Ultimate Fighter was the perfect opportunity for me to make a lasting impression on, on the next generation of fighters. Once we get sweaty, we'll start our 10 rounds. All right, just 10 rounds. I was actually, when I met these kids, I knew that we had picked a better team. Uh, Daniel Cormier is the world champ, so him and all of his coaches know their stuff, and whatever they say goes. That's Joey G. 
None of them are the same. I think the key is the first moments, right? I really did take the title of Diamond right away because of his workability. And also, he's a young wrestler. You know, he's like, the, he reminded me of a lot of the kids that I coach. I'm excited. Hey, you're fine right there, Joe. Tag that. You got it. My man, Joe Gennetti, got that submission off right away. I was so happy for these guys. That's my boy. That's my boy. That's my boy. Like, pure, pure joy to watch them have success on this show. Because, you know, we're winning fights in front of 20,000 people. These kids, if they can just win a fight in the UFC's octagon, it means the world to them. And for me to play a part in that, it just felt special. I thought Stipe did a pretty good job of coaching. The whole time that we're on The Ultimate Fighter, I wanted to just beat him at everything. If you can't win any of the fights on the show, if you can't win a hockey challenge, if you can't win in so many things that are so in your favor, how are you supposed to win a fight, you know? I thought it would play a part in terms of who he is mentally when we competed against each other. So yeah, I, I sized him up the entire time. Incredible season you did. Thank you so much. All right. Hey, hey, listen, boys. Coach will give you that warm and fuzzy feeling come July 7th. Steve, I didn't want to have to do it to you. Steve, I didn't want to be the one when I came to Cleveland, but I got to. All right, what's up, everybody? Thanks for coming today. We appreciate it. Welcome to International Fight Week. Let's get it started. Who's got the first uh, first question? DC, everyone always says the next fight is their biggest, but right here, right now, do you think this is the biggest one of your career? Yeah, it's the biggest fight of my career. I'm fighting the most successful UFC heavyweight champion of all time, the baddest man on the planet. So nothing I've done to this point is bigger than this. I've lived in these moments since I first started fighting. This is another fight to me. Saturday, I go fight Stipe, great fighter, great champion, but I win again. And final question for Stipe. Do you feel that you want to get him out of there early? Well, I think everyone should end their night early. I mean, that's the way to go. I mean, who doesn't want to get a knockout and go home early? Thanks for coming, you guys. See you Friday. I tripped over that speaker, and it hurt my knee a little bit, but I pretended it hurt a little bit more because I was just embarrassed. I can't believe I fell down in front of all those people. You know, you look at Dana, and Dana's like, why would anyone do that? This did not just happen. When you had so much riding on the fight, it, it's upsetting, but it was fine. You know, I knew that I was going to be OK to fight. And just needed time to shake it out. That's fine. Are we still going to do a stare down? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Copy. All right. Whenever you guys are ready to come back out, we'll be set up from right here. Yeah. I'm ready. You good? Let's go. Yeah. Okay. You know, these face-offs were always tough because you know how tough this guy's gonna be. But I knew, man, I was like, this is, I'm set up for something really special uh, tomorrow night. The scores have a line for International Fight Week 2018, and now the super fight of all super fights, a clash of champion versus champion, Miocic versus Cormier. I could feel that this one, even to the Jones fights, I felt this one was the biggest thing I'd ever been associated with. Never before has a UFC light heavyweight champion moved up to challenge the active heavyweight champion. That is our reality here and now. And I always talk about how nervous I am before these fights, but when I'm there and I'm getting ready to compete, I understand that there's no place that I would rather be. Stipe Miocic on paper, Joe. This is the most accomplished UFC heavyweight champion this octagon has ever seen. Absolutely. I mean, the consensus best ever, really. I mean, you think about the guys he's beaten, what he's done, and the fact that he's the only guy to ever defend the title three times. It's a really interesting matchup. Daniel Cormier trying to leave here with a piece of unprecedented UFC history. Stipe Miocic trying to successfully defend this belt for a fourth time. And then once we started fighting, I was like, you know, I, I figured I could compete with anyone, but 
you know, for all the power that he possessed. It wasn't as hard. It's exactly what I expected, you know, but he was hittable. Offense, DC, go! Oh! They won two from Cormier! You know, I thought this combination really did change the fight a little bit. It allowed me to really get off on it. Oh, look at that, one, two by DC. Yes, go, go! Oh! He hurt him! Oh! This happened, this was the craziest moment of my life. I just thought to myself, jump on him and, and finish. Those are my coaches. Daniel Cormier is the UFC heavyweight champion! Look at my dad, my mom. My father had never been happy and proud of me. All his coaches were saying he translates well at this weight. The weight he wears well, he hits harder. He's knocked out everybody he's trained with. That's what they were saying, and here it is. You know, I've accomplished some great things in my life, but there's never been anything quite like this. As bad as I felt in July of 2017, this trumped that. Undisputed UFC heavyweight champion This was the greatest moment of my sporting career. I never understood, you know, like, who I would become as a heavyweight. On that night, I just understood that I etched my name in stone in, you know, the conversation for the greatest fighters to ever step in the octagon. Oh, man. It's the most amazing thing ever. This is crazy, man. <laughs> Things you could never dream of, I'll tell you that much. I mean, look, these are the ones that truly matter. They're what I fight for, and my beautiful daughter, my wife, beautiful wife, and my son. My mom, just big old bear hug. She was so proud of me. Oh, my God. That was crazy. Yeah, that was crazy. Thank you. My father. <laughs> Just the, uh... That was crazy. Yeah. That was crazy. You know, I, uh... My dad just meant the world to me, you know? And I'm just glad he got to experience that. You know... I lost my father in August. So 12 months before, I gave him the greatest night of all time. He got to watch his kid become immortal. And when I look back on that year from 2017 in July to 2018, I, my parents had to deal with the lowest of lows to the highest of highs, and it was tough, you know? They saw some bad stuff. I'm happy that fast forward a year and they got to experience a high that they could never have imagined. They, they, my parents watched me at football games and wrestling matches all through high school and college, but they saw their kid, you know, boy that they raised with nothing. All the sacrifices, my dad working multiple jobs, my mom cleaning houses. They saw their boy that they broke their back for uh, do this amazing thing. And um, I'm just happy that I was able to give that to him. You know, when my time is over in this sport of mixed martial arts, I want people to remember me as a guy that fought hard Every time I got in there, a guy that, although undersized, always gave it 110% and did this thing with class, with honor. And I want to be a guy that people look back on and go, at every step of the way, Daniel was responsible. He was a role model, he was a leader, and he's the type of guy that I want my kids to try and mimic in sport and hopefully in life too. And that's truly what I want to be remembered for.